And here we go. Well, this is Flash at the Dark Table on this Saturday, the 4th of May, 2019. I'm going to try to drag this out just a tad and get a sound check from Grimner on the Real Liberty Media. Because I've had some software and hardware issues for the last few programs. But it said, see, it changed. Ah, there we go, our dork table. And anyway, we'll give Grim a thanks ahead of time for the help he's going to give me to get this show straightened out. Because uh, I haven't seen anything on the main feed about being audible so i can cheat here but i'm gonna open up something on the computer here to take a peek uh, but we're either live or we aren't oh yeah there you go i don't see but it should have been Oh, okay, I'm kind of loud, so I'm on. All right. Let me see what I can do about that. Yeah, because uh, things got straightened out a little bit. Let's see if that tones it down just a tad. We'll move the mic around. <laughs> My red dinner jacket. And we're going to say hello to the bots and bodies occupying the chat room today on the real liberty media dot com we got barman beetle grimner thanks grim uh moose girl uh miss kate went to get eyewear so she just logged on and didn't turn off uh-oh we got anti asmo Chalcedony, free enslaved Gram Z I B Don C, mm, Java Doctor Two, Meister Brow, mm, Ponder Gander Rain, Rob Works Roams, Vanna White, Vinny A hey, Vinny. Weather Dork, Z Beth, Z Phantom, and Will Then Circle. Hello, honey. Ah, uh, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle. A Mental D Dork Cakes is here. And <laughs> me, Frumped, Frumpy Gromit, Guest. Four two seven. Ooh, secret identity player. Jays nines. Jays cos you. Carl underscore marks. Kiss. Mmm. Ponsa sock puppet. Salamo. Van meter and. Wanna Vite, Winnie, Winnie, Vinny's new pain in the ass, I suppose, on the name thing. Anyway, that's the lineup for this Saturday for all you readers of chat out there in the electronic world. And apparently, everybody wants the fourth to be with you how clee shit but what the fuck anyway today we're gonna i guess i'm doing a dork table without my co-hostages who i've been hey mental who i've been managing to uh drag on the wire and kidnap hold them hostage here at the table and force them to interact they've escaped my clutches so i think i'll do a a link to open up let me find something interesting i already already did i'm just stalling while i open it 
Hey, Salamo, if you're uh, out there and listening to the show, say yes or hey or something on the main feed, because I'm going to read one of your handiworks. And this little gem <laughs> from Slamo, it's called My Mind. Wait, let me clear a throat here. Ooh, sip a little tea. I got a little Grimner going on in my voice. That's not good. Hmm. Anyway, My Mind and the World. And it's, hey, I wonder if I read this on another show, but it's sure interesting. Anyway, I, I don't have a good memory, so bear with all this crazy stuff. It's called The Age of Stupidity. I know nothing. What has happened is that society has gotten, I'm going to say it, stupid. Fortunately for some, technology for smart gadgetry is running rampant and it can help organize your life. Now hold on, I'm going to check on the RLM. Uh, hey, there he is. Salamo just showed up so you can hear me butcher his good writing skills. Okay. Wish me luck. I, I'm on the first paragraph. Okay. Click accept here and accept the fear of losing it along with the personal connection to others which you so crave yet can't really find the right app. People will usually buy the next flashy, digital, larger, whatever, and stare at it and wonder, all the while confusing it for innovation and evolution. Swipe, swipe, drool. Ah, you've got a crazy old sense of humor. Let me light up a smoke. Sip a little tea, get my throat a little th better here, and uh, I'll be one second here. I'll be one gulping sucker. Hang on. Ah, anyway, where was I? Possible causes for this are <laughs> education or lack thereof, and as we have seen it, politicized, it offers obedience training rather than questioning and discovering. I'm going to copy and put this up on the RLM. I forgot I hadn't. Little stone this afternoon. Bear with me. I'm, I'm in remedial math class. I'm doing my best. Okay. There it is, right there, for the whole Real Liberty media to enjoy. Now, where did I leave off here? Oh. Uh, hmm. uh, obedience trading, rather, and question, and discovery. There is little hope in that venue at the moment until the ideas are free to return. And total bombardment of the senses, or media mind control, everywhere of what to buy, how to look, what cool is, and my favorite, the measure of success. Yeah, that's my favorite too. Success cannot be measured in monetary terms as judged by others. Coincidentally, I was just talking that kind of crazy stuff the other night when I did 20% uh, off. Back to the story. It is the betterment of oneself with respect to global impact. And no, it is not a global warming. 
it is still called that thing and a self respect which demands a better now for everyone let's face it the causes are endless and all lead to the acquiescence to the now which is false at an individual level well your writing is a little complicated enjoyable though i like to have to think about something so i didn't read the entire thing i just kind of perused it and thought well throw it on the dork table and see if anybody enjoys it back to this epic story the moral imperative of life is to live a life that detracts not at all from the lives available to those who will fill, follow us into this world. That was uh, Don Robertson, the American philosopher. Uh, what I get from this, what, what I get from that is, a little high still, let me get back to normal, that we are short sighted and seem to live with little regard for those which will follow. Hmm. That our vision should not be about the next five or even 25 years, but beyond that, a thousand years or more. At this point in time, the only innovation that is created is something that will make the masses spend more and more in a continual loop of consume and throw away. The next flashy gadget or really sharp TV, stunned in parentheses, is just around the corner or perhaps a watch which controls your drone while live streaming, <laughs> streaming to social media is more your style. Sign up! Click accept and enjoy the ride as we really mess with your minds and spy on everything you do. Our system of life, though, dictates that we live quarter to quarter. The financial quarter. Where is all this money in the world going? It seems to me that there is a huge detraction of present lives being affected every day, let alone the future. How can there be a future when most cannot even see the present? What a waste of energies. Now, the next one's a little interesting. I'm a house what? Is that what our 40-hour-a-week enslavement is working towards these days? Feeding a system that is way past its term. Keep, keep flogging that dead horse. Wow, it's like I steal this guy's ideas and talk about him on, on the radio. This is frightening. It has gotten downright What's the word? Oh, yeah. Stupid. Why are we still playing this game when there are plenty of resources for everyone? It's the greed that begins at the top. That is the problem. Sorry it doesn't stop there. It seeps down. And the roots have taken a very good hold. In case y'all hadn't noticed... We are in the middle of a large money grab, land too. Parts of this post are 10 years old and nothing has changed. Wow. Uh, take, take two seconds, go check out the chat. Yeah, I can tell by just the little bit I've been reading there. Uh, wow. We see this very similarly how's the volume on the on the radio doing let me see if anybody got an, any more complaints about 
my levels. Yeah, I'll go back to the story. This is cool. Now, let me get a T. Hold on one second. Now, the governments at local levels have begun to mark their territory and show the citizenry who is boss. A bylaw here and overstepping of grounds there and a normalization from a town to rural in their application. We won't raise your taxes. Instead, they raise the evaluation assessment, which increases the taxes. All while the people complain, yet do nothing but accept it as, that's just the way it is, as they borrow against the new evaluated price and embrace their servitude. Yeah, that's pretty much what we do, isn't it? Yeah, that's sickening. It's either uh, play the game or don't. What do you do? So, hmm, I don't know, but your your writing is pretty interesting here. I hope uh, I hope other people take a minute to take a look at it. It's very sensible down to earth it's not screaming insanity so let me continue with salamo's epic story it says controls are tightening have you noticed how traveling is starting to be a pain in the arse just getting permission to leave or enter your country of birth can be a chore for some. Uh, are we no longer free to travel? Did I miss the memo? We were never free to travel. That's what the borders are for. Come on. Get, get a grip on this. Have you noticed that protesting is going the way of the unions? Now, I remember when I was in a union in the 70s, it was still kind of fucked up, the UAW, but they did protect the job, and hmm, there were benefits that if you needed them, they were there. Of course, that all has changed and been replaced with other things since, and all the uppity mucks make all the money, and all the workers get replaced by robotics. <laughs> it's beautiful. Mm. The death of cheered on by the armchair populace, which critiques and is indignant that the rabble is unhappy. So many opinions based upon nothing but sound bites attained while sitting in front of one's television. Accept and move on. After all, I went to school and worked until pension. Life's not all that bad. Back up, little camper. Search protest police and get the picture. They're hosing, spraying, gassing, kettling, and beating you for your own good. You know, Salamo, this stuff really caught on, and the cops have... They've kind of eliminate the beating shit and they just shoot you now at least that's what the internet's telling me unless i'm reading all the wrong links and seeing all the wrong videos back to the story <clears throat> so many more controls are happening on a global level same sorts of things are happening all over the western world as municipalities begin to clamp down and show their strength, as populations are trained to obey, and where waving soldiers drive by in their toys of war, all this paid for by the people who themselves, forever paying for their indoctrination into slavery, well, at least they own that. 
Wow. Ooh, very good. Anyway, back to the story. What a man believes upon grossly insufficient evidence is an index into his desires. Desires of which he himself is often unconscious. If a man is offered a fact which goes against his instincts, he will scrutinize it closely. And unless the evidence is overwhelming, he will refuse to believe it. If, on the other hand, he is, a, he is offered something which affords a reason for acting in accordance to his instincts, he will accept it even on the slightest evidence. The origin of myths is explained in this way. Bertrand Russell wrote to Freedom. Wow, yeah, the myths that carry through and the ideas that people pick up because they read a book and sometimes because they read the book, they have no physical experience whatsoever with what they're advising. But they read a book and the book says you need to do this and you need to do that. You know what I always like to do is find out who wrote the book. See if that person ever once did any of the shit that they're suggesting that you do. Or did they just read a book and they're just reciting what they've memorized because it sounds good. Uh, reading is so much fun. Hey, thanks, Slamo. This is killing me. I'm having a, a hard time reading it because it's making me laugh, and I don't want to laugh while I read it. It's a very serious topic. Divide and conquer. And we're going to go back to the story. Ringing any bells for anyone, the citizenry happily define themselves into pre-existing labels such as left slash right, anti slash pro, this ist slash ism, and that ism slash ism. Insert labels here. <laughs> now, sorry, Slamma, but yeah, I know... I know how it feels to think this way and look out on the people and wonder why they just don't get it. I used to go down to the train. The, the guy that owned the kiosk at the train where my wife goes to work, before the one that owns it now, we had this understanding and we just look at each other. After certain people would do certain behavior, and we both should be shaking our head wondering why that guy doesn't get it. And he was from the Middle East and an Arab. And I'm from L.A. and a you know, nose Jew from California. And both of us transplanted here because of marriage. And we had a lot in common that was way more important than the the crap our our countries want to pit us against each other you know so we won't never get along that's a bunch of shit it's all that political crap you need to get over that somehow if you want to be comfortable i think is probably the but the right way to explain it because people one-on-one -on -one are fascinating i mean not all of them yeah there's a lot of dead time talking but you know, you you don't find gold unless you go through all the rocks. <laughs> so sometimes a, a little sacrifice is necessary. Gonna get a sip and attack this story again. Hold on, folks. Mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Slurp, slurp. Ooh. Now, where was I? Now. Here is a concept that does work. Basically, you're the minority of the planet, but you want the majority to think your way. Well, then why not divide and conquer? 
Fear is an excellent weapon here as you can make people be afraid of anything, really, even themselves. Make them afraid of each other. Make them compete with each other. Make them so xenophobic that if the world was falling apart and their neighbor came by for help, that they would be too afraid to let them in. You know, that zombies, anyone? Ding. Interesting. Now, keep plastering images of good old something. Don't forget the flag. Trust the product. Trust the company. Trust the experts. Trust the government. Trust us. Ding, ding, ding. The only unity I see is that of the lie. Their belief in and defense of the lies, which they must believe are true in order to make their lives real. <laughs> the security, property, borders, competition, resources, ownership, all of it, lies. And the notion that it can be fixed from within with a little tweak here and an honest politician there are the self-induced delusions which feed these lies. Be your leader. Yeah, this is really a good... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much uh, in agreement with what this means. You know, how you write it and the language you use and all that, that's all clever. But behind a writer's writing, there should be something more. You know, when I when I read something, I like to see layers. You know, this means this, but if you think like that, it might mean this too. <laughs> anyway, it is in coming together as sovereign individuals that unity begins. That is the power. That is the truth for real future implications. Not being led down some path for another's gain through manipulative tactics which use fear, guilt, shame, and punishment to control. Ooh the citizenry. It was hard to say that word. Some say that it is just part of our social contract, which we apparently all signed with umbilical cord fluid as we exit the womb, all waiting to vote for the next chosen choice. Survival of the fittest? No, survival of the richest. Why would the human inhabitants of the world choose to live like this? I will tell you that it, it does not take intelligence to make money. What it does take are cunning and a certain moral flexibility. <laughs> what seems more difficult these days is simply getting over ourselves and letting love flow. An honest look in the mirror with an open-minded reflection of now. For me, the former is much more difficult. I will not assimilate into a society which is not social, nor a civilization which is not civil. Step out of the age of stupidity and rejoice in your ignorance, for there are endless things to discover and imagine but what do i know other than nothing posted by sylvain lamoro i hope i say your name at least half right and that was slamo on i say it slamo on the uh, reallibertymedia.com throwing a little blog out there and what i did was i read the last bit that's what decided in my head I wanted to read that on a show I had no idea it was going to be a dork table though that was a little surprising to me anyway we're here on a dork table on this uh, 4th of May in 2019 
and the sun is out. It's chilly, you know, but we've got the sun at the time of year when there's usually no sun. So, hmm, have they been playing with the atmosphere? I think so. Uh, especially noticed it this year. Lots of strange stuff going on in the sky. Seeing things that I've never seen in the ways that I saw them. A lot of planes flying around, leaving dust behind them. Uh, well, maybe not a lot. Enough to get my attention. Probably like monthly they do this fly thing and it seems like over the you know where the sea is the planes aren't directly over us but whatever the winds probably blow that shit they're dumping on us but it's a small area so they're probably not trying to kill us off they just want us to be compliant so whatever the chemtrails are carrying lethal or not we're still getting them too Whatever they are. Hmm. And there's a few folks on the radio on Real Liberty Media that have distinctly mentioned the difference between comtrails and chemtrails. When we were kids, because Grimm's about my age, he remembers looking up at the sky and seeing the, the jet planes in the 60s. And they had those trails after them. But what the difference is, is they vanished they evaporated into the atmosphere the shit they're doing now hangs there and spreads fucks up the sunshine the next day so you can't <laughs> you can't be comfortable when you see these planes i don't know what they're doing i don't feel different but from what i've read on the internet and seen over the years just their presence is uh disturbing i think that might be the way to put it. Uh, let's see what's a going on. We've got some chitter chatters in the reallibertymedia.com. Oh, they're loving each other and giving each other great concepts and ideas to play with. So it's a typical chat room Saturday. Hey, there's Rob Works. I don't know. I think Rob's um, stopped listening to my radio because of me and Vinny. But eh, you can't please everybody. In fact, I have a tr lot of trouble pleasing more than one or two people at a time. I think I should just settle into that role and, and accept it, you know, and not try to make everybody happy. Not like anybody's going to accuse me of that anyway. Ah, Beetle, he is responding to some of my comments with FS, they are killing us off. Yeah. No, I, I seriously believe that, and they do it so slowly that some of us survive a lot of it. And depending on what you eat, what you don't eat, that might make a big difference in how long you last in the game. I believe over what I've learned on the internet mainly, we are what we ingest. You know, whatever you fuel yourself with, that's what comes out of you. You put it in, it comes out. Hey, I might be like a lot smarter than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, Beetle, don't give up. You know, the, we're, we're, the end. <laughs> I've been hearing the end, hey Rob, I've been hearing the end of the world since I was a preteen. I remember 11, 12 years old, hearing the older kids and the, oh, I had a lot of cousins that were older than teenagers when I was like 11, and their parents, and I'd eavesdrop and listen to what they were talking about, and the same stories today. Just updated versions about government, police. It's all evolved into this control. Do as we say. We're going to punish you. If you step out of line. We've got courts. We got cops. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm kind of old-fashioned. I think if you piss me off and I can physically see you, 
whoops, you know, that could end badly for both of us. So hmm, how I've managed to cope with that is I don't take life and reality life, the physical daily shit. It's all sweet. I saw the police today, first time in a year. But when I, I was coming home, and as I passed coming up to my house, the police passed by, and I heard back behind me in town an ambulance. So maybe it was just a coincidence, but seeing them, I don't know. It's not the shocking like when the LAPD would be uh, in the same lane I was driving in at one point, and I was all nervous because I, I didn't carry a license. And at that, when I was new at it, I was concerned. I, I didn't know. I thought, holy shit, I'm driving without a license. They're going to kill me. You know, and all they ever did, I got stopped. Well, one time I was in San Francisco and I was waiting for a friend in front of a bar. So I got a I got a, a ticket for sitting in, in the lane that I was in waiting for my friend to come out of the bar. And another time it was in Tennessee and I, I again uh my car looked something like something the cop was looking for and at the end he goes, Ah man, you're not the I am looking for and now I gotta fucking write you a ticket for no license because I had to stop the car and he wasn't pleased a bit as a black cop he was like uh, fuck I hate to have to do this shit but my guy, my boss will get on my butt so he wrote the ticket there you go and there's my life of uh, <laughs> driving without a license for I started in, in 80 I think 7 and I drove my last car in 2011. Last time I drove. And I don't think driving something that you forget how to do. This Driving's driving. Uh-oh. We have all kinds of crazy chitter-chatter going on in the RLM chat. They're saying all kinds of stuff I can't even the code <laughs> they're they're doing all kinds of jokey stuff making up crazy things and sometimes that's what we need is a little break you know from all the serious because wow we're worse what would the word drowning i believe in serious like for example there's a a member on the RLM chat that has uh, a living problem, and everybody has advice. Okay, well, I always go along with this old... I learned this from a guy in Florida when I was in my early 30s. Never heard it before that, so I was late to pick this up. I was... He, I was working for the guy, and I was doing a tile slash painting job. And one of the girls that I was getting along with, he was dating her, haha. <laughs> and uh, so I'm complaining to him about her, and he says, "Well, stop right now. Look, there's your side, there's her side, and there's what already happened." So he took me off the painting job, put me on the tile job, made everybody happy, and still got to pork the little girl. See, because he was smart. But what it what it taught me is, I think in the overall, is um, you'll hear what you want to hear when somebody, somebody comes to you with a problem and you hear it. Well, you hear their problem with your understanding of, of their problem and that sometimes it doesn't always translate perfectly sometimes there's little things that are they're left out overlooked or blatantly ignored it depends on the situation so on this particular situation I'm gonna take a back seat just watch the events unfold and see what happens. There's 
no help I can offer anyway. I'm all the way out here in Denmark. Can send you love vibrations and make you feel good. But if you want anything more than that, I'm kind of out of reach. But what I won't do is advise you on how to handle this particular type of situation. But I got to admit, it's a very um, dramatic TV kind of interesting to a point thing to see go on. And it's a shame that people treat each other the way they do. Because I've been on the side that Donna's on, on a possession thing. And I decided to let them have it. You know, if if the stuff is more important than the person, then l let them have the stuff. You'll get stuff back in life tenfold. But when you start fighting with people and drawing blood, they open this vein and then you open that vein, it never ends. It'll just go on and on and on and on. So in my history, the best thing for me, not for you, for me, was to just let let things go the way they're going to go, see what happens and with life. Life is amazing. And <laughs> like that, a little story I read, you know, we're so indoctrinated and we believe all these just crazy ideas set it to us by the society that we all disagree with in the long run anyway. Well, not all of us. There's a status or two amongst the real liberty media dot com. Hmm. But, you know, without them, we wouldn't be here doing what we do. So, it's kind of nice to have somebody that's in that lifestyle, that preaches that state shit that doesn't work for anybody except the state. So, I know who follows what, you know, mentality, where they're at in life. You know, what they're trying to do, how they advise other people, kind of lets you know what they themselves are. <laughs> Grim. Mm. Yeah, Mike's not feeling too good about those hoes. Wow. Hmm. I don't know. I don't seem to cluster people into groups i try not to maybe i do you know like well the jews and the palestinians i kind of clump those two groups because they're at war you got to identify them hmm. but what that taught me is you know in the overall we're all palestinians now we're all underneath that big Jew cock trying to get out from under that dripping shit. And the Jews want to drown us in it. Hmm. If you say anything bad about them, you know what happens? You're wrong. Because if you say anything bad about the Jews, you're anti-Semitic. Ah, what a trap, huh? I think I'm going to start that. Maybe I'll go all Jew. And whenever somebody disagrees with me or they call me a drug addled hippie, I'll blame it on that they hate the Jew in me. <laughs> Hide behind my Jewy Jewness. <laughs> and sadly, this is the part that really fucks with my head. Is that there's people out there that really believe this Jew shit that would support me because of my nose and my circumcision and my words. I don't even have to prove anything. I just say I'm Jewish and they jump. I will protect you. What's going on? <laughs> what? Who's hurting in you? What did those bastards do to you? 
Well, they borrowed money from a bank and they think it's all my fault. <laughs> because that's pretty much, you know, where the shit part of life comes in right now. The, the cornerstone of all of it. Debt. We're all struggling and suffering in this trillions of dollars of debt that the representatives slash leaders slash asshats keep getting us into deeper and deeper and deeper without ever fixing or repairing or creating anything that's worth having. It's all temporary. Temporary shit. Second fucking rate at the very best <sighs> it must sound horrible to hear it put that way <laughs> but you know if you've had a car or a motorcycle or some kind of a lawn equipment that runs on fuel <laughs> if you don't have clean spark plugs guess what happens mm -hmm. If some joker decided to be funny and throw some sugar into your gas tank, whoa, guess what your engine's not going to do? It's not going to run. <laughs> Coincidence, because I, I love my sugar, you know. But I stay active enough to where I think if I started to feel all run down and old and moldy, I hey, I'd notice it and hey, sir, I'm not feeling so good. But fortune's with me. But still, I use the shit that's not good for me. But we're so fucked up at this age physically that I don't know. I don't know if. Being pure at this point in time wouldn't kill me. <laughs> My body's been fueled and sourced on all this garbage all these years. So it was like when uh, me and Cirque were first together, I was not a big vegetable enjoyer. I spent a lot of time with the greasy food and the potatoes, stuff like that. And Cirque had other ideas. And she says, hey, try this. So I did. And my poor body went it basically went into a form of shock. And I had to take these seeds. She had these seeds prepared. You know, they're not prepared, but already there. So that if this, it was like, if this does happen, take these. It'll fix that. But that is a result of of changing over from the greasy crap to this vegetable stuff. And it was probably the worst three days of my five and a change with Cirque, but it was temporary. And the, the misery of that was well worth it because I'm still here. I'm going to be the big 6-0 in September. Me and Grim are racing to, uh, to birthday this year. But I'm still older than... I thought he was older than me. Found out I'm older than him. So, whoop -dee, fucking doop -dee, but it's nice to be ahead at something. He kicks my ass when I play trivia with him. But at least I'm older. And I, when I get mad, I can send him to his room, put him in a timeout, take his cookie away. <laughs> I'm fucking around, Grim. But these these things that in life that are so important it, to me have come to nothing. Nothing is uh, nothing outside coming at me. Eh, fuck it. What does it matter? Uh, what do we got going on? More wars. Europe's on fire. The Arabs are burning down the Christian churches by the dozen the people are in. A, France is always like that, though. France is in an uproar again. Uh, and then the, the people, they, 
they want the things they want, but they never seem to think about what caused the problem. Like 9-11, they brought down the Twin Towers and all that. We, amongst the RLM people, the, uh, what would, what do you call us? With the, hmm, the anarchist scum, uh, yeah, 59. I'm 59 already, you little kid. Ah. Anyway, but, well, how do you put that? To somebody that believes the official story, you know, follows the government and believes what they're told, they see one thing, and there's some of us that, what uh, conspiracy theorists i could see it's so far removed from me to identify myself as one just it's ridiculous i don't believe in conspiracy theories i believe in the reality of how i interpret what i see and how i see it and i trust myself enough to not have to ask outsiders what do you think to make up my mind you know my mind i make it up there you go well what if you're wrong well then if i'm wrong show me where i'm wrong i'll look at it and more than likely come to the right decision and see it the correct way whatever that is usually though it's so a million miles away from what the system tells me it's supposed to be. <laughs> but life goes on no matter what I do to it. I'm still here. And I've got, I got Cirque telling me that when we first got together, she says, eh, I keep you around for 30 years. And when she said it, I thought, my God, 30 years, it sounds like a prison term to be that old. And now here we are five years into this thing, and I feel physically better now than I did when I met her. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's possible. It's not likely. I, I would give, I'd bet money that the states, the the people of the world, whatever population, something will go wrong, horribly wrong eventually. And I won't get my 30 years. But on the other hand, if I, if I take her advice and do what she suggests, at least if it doesn't blow up, <laughs> I'll be healthy enough to enjoy what, you know, what there is left. But I'm not one of those prepper people. And, you know, after the shit hits the fan, me and Sir kind of going to scavenge the wastelands, surviving with the animals that didn't die. <laughs> you know, fighting with strangers over what's available to eat and <laughs> water sources. It's, it's just too, too ignorant for me to believe that you know that that's the core of humanity is that if we we don't have our electricity and our phones <laughs> we're gonna all attack each other and eat brains <laughs> as a source of entertainment and fuel But that's what I read on the internet. That's what I see on the links in the movies. <laughs> I know I shouldn't be laughing, but it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> well, not not kind of. It's it's guess what? <laughs> it's totally ridiculous. <sighs> but yeah, I could just see that scrounging on the you know the the wastelands of a failed society to survive. <laughs> Why? It just strikes me as I'm so spoiled by, you know, life being what it's been. You know, you're hungry, you go to the store, you get some food. You're thirsty, you go to the bar and you get a beer. So if society collapses, collapses and <laughs> we're we're all trying to eat each other's brains and survive 
I don't think so. It's just too damn funny to, to imagine that that really could happen to us. But, boy, yeah, Grimner brains. I don't know what the... It's, it's as though we're living in a story that was written long, long ago. And as the time unfolds in front of me, I see all the things written in the past happening in the present. And like this AI, sh I got to stop laughing. Sorry, guys. But this, <laughs> sorry, artificial intelligence, uh, cried out loud. What do we have? artificial fucking intelligence most of this shit we know is a bunch of crap <laughs> global global warming of federal reserve banks you know the jews are this chosen people it's just all this bullshit story after bullshit story and if they keep us ignorant enough and and out of tune with where you are physically now it's easier to control you worrying about where are you gonna go when you're dead <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know where i'm at now while i'm alive and this group of wackadoodles wants me to spend my time alive preparing myself for the the afterlife that like the moon, nobody's ever actually touched. They say they've touched it. Mm -hmm. They make documentaries and films, and they've traveled to it. They've got moon bases on it. <laughs> but we're still arguing about, is the Republican right? Or is the Democrat right? <laughs> Jeez, they're both the same fucking thing. Maybe they're both wrong. <laughs> What's I talk about out there? Huh? My wife is going outside with a dog to escape my insane rant. <laughs> Poor thing. Well, I don't know, something about just the mood. The mood of the world, you know, the way I see this crazy world and then the way that it's expressed to me on the internet, they're two different worlds. Uh, as much trouble as I've had with people on a personal level in the past, <laughs> I still think that people are basically okay, you know, for the most part. Well, yeah. Basically, and that includes me. I'm not any different. I have moods and uh, reactions. <laughs> if you tell me this and you say it like that, I'm going to behave a certain way, just like everybody else. And, you know, we're, we're so different. <laughs> because, uh, why? Well, I was exceptional when I lived in America because I was from L.A. That pulls a lot of weight to this day. When people ask me here in town, I haven't met them before, and they say, wow, where are you from? You, ah, from L.A. They say, really? Wow. And to me, they're from here. And this is so perfect that I'm humbled in a way that shit i come from such a boring not interesting place because it's wherever a person is is usually not as exciting as what's over the hill <laughs> it's, this is the way we were i guess groomed to covet you know and want what the other guy has so <laughs> You can be successful and own the color blue someday. Hmm. Ah, and Van Meter is going to Florida soon, maybe in the next month. Good luck on your trip. 
it's always good to travel. I remember going to Florida. I spent a few years on and off. Miami, uh, mostly in the south. I'd been through places like Jacksonville, Lakeside, uh, in the Panhandle. What was that? I can't even think of it. Uh, Tallahassee, I spent some time there. I, I broke down in a truck, a little pickup truck. Had to get a job to fix the truck and this and that and the other. And this is, this is really bad because... I had scored a job in a motel as a night manager, but to make sure there was plenty of rooms for the cars to be parking in the motel, I parked my truck across the road on the side of the road. And I had probably been there two nights. I think it was my third night. And while my shift is cooking, I'm ready for people and this, that, and the other. I hear this big, loud ex crash, kind of like an explosion. And what happened is this woman fell asleep behind the wheel of her car and rear-ended my truck and just totaled both, both vehicles. But if my truck hadn't been parked where it was by the... Uh, where it had been she was a it was an in like an incline and she would have more li likely gone off into the incline and hit trees and probably killed herself so yeah <laughs> well the job didn't last so long because well my plans changed without a vehicle and i decided to go back to california but i did find out that it does snow and Tallahassee, Florida in the winter. So, you know, it was a cheap lesson. Cost me a truck. And I think even, uh, well, I think it was insured for something. I can't remember what, what, but, uh, I, we got paid off for the, for the truck being damaged. Well, totaled <laughs> actually, <coughs> but this is back in like, geez, what was that? 76. I was just a, just a teeny bopper, you know, out there exploring the world, kind of <laughs> learning how to live. And disaster strikes, you know, it doesn't pick you because of anything in particular. You could be anybody. And if something's horrible is going to happen, it's going to happen. And there's not anything you can do. You can't insure yourself out of it. You can, Maybe you can go to the psychics and, <laughs> and ask them. They'll tell you, don't be here at this time on this day or you'll die, <laughs> I guess. Eh, well, what the hell. The world is an interesting place. Hmm. Let me see if I got any more good links to read, but I don't know. Mate, I had expected Vinny or uh, Miss Mary to pop in with me today, and unfortunately, we didn't have any help on the Dork Table podcast. So I figured I'd just smoke one and see what comes up through my crazy old mind. Because, you know, like, I like Minds.com, and I like BitChute, but I'm not a big uh, copy and paster. I do it occasionally. Not, you know, like every 20 minutes I got something so important. You've got to see this. But, you know what? I found a link I might be able to read. Let me open this little puppy up. And see, I'm stalling while it loads. It says the title of this epic is FDA cover up question mark. New data obtained shows MMR vaccine approved on clinical trials of only 342 children. Half suffered side effects. And this is written by a fellow named Brian Shilhavy, editor, Health Impact News. And 
here goes the story, folks, if you're still hanging it on the dark table. I went off on a crazy old rant because uh, <laughs> I just got the giggles today about just the insanity of uh, how everything seems to me because I'm so calm. <laughs> you know, I've got uh, so little excitement going on outside of the, uh, <laughs> the internet because... That's what I want. I want it peace and quiet, and I got it. So when something excites me or makes me laugh or makes me angry, whatever the uh, excitement leads to, I tend to go full tilt with it. Anyway, let me try reading this. Uh, it's about vaccine impact, or it's off a of site. That might be called vaccine impact, because this is huge. And people have been lied to again. Again and again, they need to know, even if they don't want to know. I'm going to try to tell them. Maybe somebody that's out there hasn't heard this side of the story just yet. And it goes like this. As we have previously reported here on Health Impact News, pharmaceutical giant Merck has been fighting a criminal case regarding its MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, vaccine in court for over eight years. <laughs> wow. As their own scientists became whistleblowers regarding fraud in the development of the vaccine. And then it says, uh, Merck fighting fraud, lawsuits in U.S. courts on MMR and Gardasil vaccines. Uh, this has got to be old shit for most of the folks on the RealLibertyMedia.com. But I'm going to try to read as much of it as I can. If I start cracking up, stop me now. <laughs> stop me. Anyway, now... Del Big Tree, founder of the nonprofit Informed Consent Action Network, has announced that a new Freedom of, Im of, the, uh, of Information Act disclosure from the Federal Food and Drug Administration has revealed that the MMR vaccine was licensed based on clinical trials which in total had less than 1,000 participants and only 342 children. Thanks to the laws in this country that for now at least permit access to various government records, we now know the MMR vaccine was licensed using an irresponsibly small and limited group of children, says Big Tree. But what's even more alarming is learning about the serious adverse events that were known and acknowledged yet ignored in order to license the MMR vaccine. Let me a second here. Let me guzzle this tea. I'll be one second. Ah, uh, Big Tree adds, noting this was after only tracking adverse events for 42 days after injection. Imagine what they might have found had they tracked safely for three years against an appropriate control, like they do for drugs. The MMR vaccine is at the heart of the vaccine debate being waged around the world. Governmental health agencies want to mandate the three-combo vaccine to all children by force if necessary. Wow. Big Tree, an Emmy Award winning producer and director of the documentary Vaxxed, from cover up to cut catastrophe says the reason for increased vaccine hesitancy is not unreasonable fear but a growth in awareness of the corruption secrecy and 
obvious overt propaganda surrounding vaccines and the pharmaceutical industry. Now, this will probably just get slapped around and buried by the you know the people that support it. You know, I was really disappointed that uh, what's his name, <coughs> Robert Kennedy. That's him, the old Robert Kennedy Jr. Because he was making a big deal about the dangers of the inoculations and whatnot. But not because he wanted to stop this, but he wanted to perfect it. So uh, one more do-gooder, you know, that's out there looking for the best for everybody, but probably would never touch the shit himself. I mean... How many of these doctors will do a video and, you know, inject this shit into their self? That's might sell it. Hey, what? Look at what it does for us. Because <laughs> I don't think average Joe understands what the inoculation does to your body. They, they just know the long and the short of it. You know, you could get sick and this will help you not get sick by getting you sick maybe they don't tell you that part when you're being injected and with this weird goo these doctors have created in in their little laboratories <laughs> you know in the secrecy of night you know under the cover of Government protection and regulation and the CDC and the FDA, well, they'll, they'll get it on through. Don't worry about it. You'll make plenty of money. Invest in other things because people are, are going to get sick. Anyway, <laughs> the vaccine is not without risks. Last year, for example, the law firm of Maglio Christopher and Toll, PAA, announced July 2018 that they had negotiated a $101 million settlement for an infant who suffered a severe brain injury. Encephalopathy, hmm. cortical vision impairment, truncal hypotonia, that's low muscle tone, and kidney failure due to the MMR vaccine. How can this not be public knowledge? I mean, if we've got this on the internet, I think that just goes to show the folks on the internet, the millions and millions and millions of them, they're not using the internet to accomplish anything. I spent many, uh, many, many years, basically, not concerned with using the Internet to find anything out. It didn't even occur to me. I, in fact, I would say the life that I was living was so comfortable at the time that it took going to Scotland to get me to take a better look at what was going on. So, hmm. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. You know, you choose a road and you follow it, or you don't, and there you go. Some people think they're uh, in control of their road, you know, where they're going to go and how life is going to be and this, that, and the other. And then I read something like I just read about the inoculations, you know, the clinical testing that didn't go on. <laughs> They didn't test children. They tested adults. What? Wait a minute. Well, how do you know what the results is going to be on kids if you don't test any of them? And then what exactly is testing them? Experimenting on them with the magic goo that you create in your laboratory <laughs> to, to see what will happen? I mean... That's my version of this. You know, they're experimenting on us. They're they're practicing medicine. You know, they're not guaranteeing you shit. They're telling you, "Hey, we want to make some money and 
you still have some. Come here, you don't look like you feel good. <laughs> oh, Rob Works, how you doing there, Mr. Works? Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Rob, and I just don't even want to get into the conversation because you said that like three hours ago and the rest of that you know free advice is still coming you should do this and you should do that is usually not good for you to do whatever you do the person telling you what to do did they do it are they doing it right now or are they just hmm helping you <laughs> Be careful because, you know, free advice has its price, but you don't pay it when you get the advice. You pay it when you use it. Mm. So, mm, like my blood pressure thing, I make it very clear. I did the unpopular thing. I took it upon myself to make a decision. Do I want to risk this or do I want to risk that? There you go. I chose to go with... Well, if this illness is going to kill me, it's better than taking these fucking pills. And that's my thing. Not a lot of other people would um, go to those extremes to find the answer to a question. And my question was very simple. The nurse was telling me, we're going to draw your blood to see how much damage, I think it was to the kidneys see how much damage your kidneys have taken as a result of taking these pills we want to make sure you're not above the danger level and like i've said 50 times i said oh i gotta go to the bathroom can you give me a minute and i left like a scared girl running away from home goodbye never looked back and here i sit and it's uh been uh, how many years now that was in november of 2011 and we're in 19 so hmm. i could be the one out of a million that can do that i don't know i don't think i'm all that special then so what i did was i pursued recently doctors that would describe what the fuck is high blood pressure anyway and I found a doctor, what was his name? John Bergman. I think Mary found him too. And I watched his link describing what high blood pressure truly is and why it's not a disease. What it truly is, is a body function. And if you go to a doctor and you're not feeling good, they've got this formula that they they created they get your blood pressure up then they they test it for you and show you it's up it's well, see it's right here it's out of the boundaries of what's good and normal and then you panic and think you're going to die and then, then you go along with whatever bullshit they tell you well i fell for it once but i'm not gonna do it ever again no 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 and i was talking to Vinny about this because his his brother and his sister were in medicine i think his sister was and no longer is his brother still is but he was telling me that his his sister's done with medicine she's got a different lifestyle going on now so hmm why would somebody go through all that succeed and then abandon their accomplishment if their accomplishment was everything that they believed it was they would stay right where they are and continue but apparently there's a lot of doctors jumping ship and the ones that do they all seem to want to expose the Rockefeller Medicine Program for what it truly is, a for-profit business. And this includes all this inoculation crap. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've done the examples over the last couple shows, so I guess I can't kind of warn that out. But Well, we're still sitting among a lot of people that think, 
I'm crazy for believing that inoculations are bad for you. But, you know, we've all thought it through and the logic is insane. Let's see, I've got the shot, but you don't. And if you don't get the shot, you're going to get me sick. Well, no. That <laughs> just insanity. Okay, well, let's go over to the chat because, uh, wow, inoculations, what a waste. What a... What a con job. I don't know what we live with today that's not based on some bullshit story. <laughs> and here we are, you know, because we're trapped. It's not like there's any way out. I know that. I don't have a way out. If I had a way out, I'd write it down and publish it. Hey, this is what you do, and this is how you do it. There is no way. Um, hmm. We're pretty much trapped in this together until, <laughs> until the zombie apocalypse comes and then we got a scrounge in the wasteland looking for scraps and water <laughs> wonderful i can hardly wait anyway <coughs> grimner has something to say about somebody named omar she says, <laughs> Omar told us, she, I think Omar is a female, you can't stop the boogeyman. <laughs> yes, you can't stop the, wow, the boogeyman. I thought we'd grown out of all that at some point in time, but nah, the, the movies and the governments are just going <laughs> to, they're just going to pound it into us until... It's normal till uh, you, you turn on your best friend. Oh, wow. Carl Marx is very upsetting. <laughs> hey, Rob, you did a good job with that bot some of the time. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to do a dark table here, and the chitter-chatter on the text is just making me giggle. Can't help it. It's just the way it is. Anyway. Let me see. What else have we got? Because I was talking with Vinny yesterday. Me and Vinny had a little time to kill. So we got together. and We were chitter-chattering about what's going on in life. You know, we've been friends for a lot of years. <laughs> well, to me, because I've been married to Cirque. This new, it's like a new life. So the further you go back into this the longer it seems but yeah i've known Vinny for a few years now and uh as crazy as the man appears to be <laughs> oh omar is not a female i thought that omar was a female girl or something oh well, that just goes to show how up I am. <laughs> Even Kate got me. <laughs> Omar is a male. <laughs> Whatever. You can't. Uh, men really talk like that? You can't hide from the boogeyman? Who the, f who the fuck is that talking to? A little kid? Good Lord. I would never talk to a child like that. I thought treating kids like people was more... The way it should be done and i did that i didn't <laughs> i didn't sugarcoat shit and be all oh poor little babies you know if you had the balls to talk to me like you were me then you deserve to be treated appropriately you know i like i told <laughs> I got rushed to hey i want to go now yeah well threw the keys at him you know not at him but at towards him there you there's the car keys. Why don't you go? I'll wait for you till you get back. <laughs> I don't know how to drive. <laughs> then shut up. <laughs> I think that people in the, you know, in the main thing in life forgot how to do that is to, <laughs> to shut the stupid ones up and teach them things. You know, it's it's like uh, sometimes the the people that have the strongest opinions are the most wrong. <laughs> I would assume 
that my opinions about some of this stuff I believe just rock the fuck out of other people. They would never agree with the things I think. Like, do no harm. How can you do no harm? That's impossible, isn't it? Depends on what you call harm, doesn't it? I mean, if you're thinking like words like me, mistaking this Omar Kent Dykes of Omar and the Howlers sings a song called The Boogeyman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. Uh, thanks, Grim. I needed another giggle to make my show sound serious today. <laughs> wow. Anyway, uh, so Donna's going to go to Florida. I see that. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, and Miss Kate is in Florida. They're going to probably meet up and find out that they're human beings that get along just fine. I wish you luck on that because uh, the people I've met over the years on the internet were just exactly what they were. I've been very fortunate. People have been very honest with me about who they are, like mental pancakes, <laughs> Miss Mary, or oh, little circle, my wife. Ah, there you go. So, I don't know, you can call it blind dude luck or fate or karma or whatever, but I think life is basically you get what you give, or you get what you put out and how it's interpreted by the receiver. Maybe your intentions are good, but their receiver is broken, and things don't click. I've been through that a few times. People uh, change their mind about, oh, you were kind of nice, but now you're not so nice anymore. <laughs> so now I just cut the middleman out and knock off all that nice shit and just get right to the meat of the stuff. You know, why lie to people and pretend to be all something that you're not? In the end, it's going to collapse around you anyway. So, being honest may not be popular, and it sure as hell isn't going to make you um, comfortable necessarily in life. Because being telling people the truth and being honest is uh, it's kind of the short end of the straw. You know, like my mistake in this Omar for a girl. Ah, so what? It's funny. You laugh. You get over it. You don't... Oh, I should go jump off the house. I made a mistake and I look foolish. Boo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Whoa, no, that's... To me, that's what your mistakes are for. So you can see. This is how you do it wrong. Then you look at it from over here and you go, Oh, that's how you do it right. I'll try that. <laughs> You're all in can. Hemped, <laughs> Grimner. They're posting <laughs> house dims threaten to hold bar in contempt. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> law. This shit should be. If you guys want to cure your law, take it away. Tell them no. Group up and tell them to go fuck theirself with an admiralty court flagpole and say goodbye <laughs> it won't work you can't you can't escape it i can't escape it i'd like to escape it but my wife will frown upon that <laughs> so so we don't we do the state you know thing as much as how do you put it i guess if the state doesn't have your mind and they've only got you physically doing what you have to do for survival, does the state really have you? I mean, they got your shit and they got your body. But if they don't have your mind and your belief system, you know, hmm, does that change anything? Hmm, I wonder. Because it feels, hey, pancakes came back back i guess he got timed out or pinged or whatever they call that but he popped back in good to see dork cakes on the saturday dork table ah 
elixir from the wife. Thanks, honey. Yeah, don't feel like I'm doing a particularly good uh, dork table today. I had expected a hostage and was planning to, to do some horsing around and telling some bad stories and but not not solo i haven't been on a, haven't been solo on a dork table for a few weeks now probably three or four i hijacked mary hijacked <laughs> old vinny oh thank you honey and uh life is life is good i i would like to see more people on the you know inner web the interweb nets <laughs> the, I'd like to see more people more positive but I don't expect it because the outside experience is so fucking negative right now you know between the food and the water and the everything else <laughs> well, what isn't there to identify as a fucking drag and I'm not talking about other people Good hit. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Let me catch my breath. That was wild. Um, they're talking about somebody that should be dead. Oh, Ginsburg. I would say they're talking about the SCOTUS and their precious Ginsburg. Wow, SCOTUS. What would it take for enough people to gather their senses and say, no, you know, I don't want to do this. No, 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 no. Would the <laughs> would the government send the troops in to Waco you if you did that in a big well, yeah, they did. When the uh, when the Bundys got support against the Fed, people showed up. Now, Vinny says a lot of, a lot of those guys were hmm, maybe not no nah, maybe not there with the best of intention, but nobody did anything to encourage the government to act on them first, so things went well in some ways. I don't think that uh, a single household against the Fed is going to stand a chance. I think the uh, cops killing the public is so common. It wasn't very common when I left the States in 11, but over the years I've noticed, like the other day I read a link and or listened to it, or maybe I read some of it, but it was about the police in a pursuit after some guy and in the truck were his female companion and four small children and for some unknown reason the police found it necessary to open fire and shoot up this truck and they managed to shoot three of the children and not not the mother but the man they were after, they shot him too, and the three kids out of the four. And it's so common now. This is just the police being police. I don't, I don't see any public uproar. Uh, nothing over here. There's no big things in Denmark about the, the killing in America by the police must stop. No, people don't. I don't think they care. Uh, sad to say that, but hmm. there's you know there's two types of people that look onto America that I encounter, and that's the ones that have, that have been there and visited and plan to return. They love America, and then there's the other people that wouldn't go to America if you threatened to set them on fire if they didn't. And there's a lot, man, there's a lot of people that I've spoken to 
that have really um, negative feelings about my homeland, basically because of the military presence around the globe. But the people, eh, they don't bitch about us, but they sure have nasty things to say about our representation. <laughs> so no wonder they hijacked leaders and just said, no, let's not even lie to them about representing them. Now nah, we're their leaders. We'll take them where we want to go. And if they don't want to go, well, fuck them. Let them try to leave. <laughs> There's two oceans and two land borders. Figure it out. It's not that difficult. Escape. Now, I say that because some miracle of life got me out of there. And apparently, I keep hearing or reading on the internet webs. When the shit hits the fan. Well, I think the shit hit the fan so many years ago that some people don't know that the shit hit the fan long, long ago. You're in it. You're living proof that human life can be reorganized and reset to accept shit that would have killed us a hundred years ago. <laughs> here, here we are again. Well, some of the kids are dying from the inoculations, but hey, some of them aren't. They're getting, you know, just minor injury. He's like the... Like the link I was reading said, you know, little problems, uh, nothing important. Step on, well, don't pick on us. We're doing our best, and that's how it sounds like the the medical profession is this group of adolescents trying to unhook a bra for the first time. <laughs> They're they had got no idea what to do. Not even if they found the boobs, they're still gonna be uh oh. Now, now what? <laughs> that's that's how I see medicine, government, leadership, representation. Name it. Oh, what a life we got into. Because <laughs> now it's you know a matter of instant or baked. And wow, I try to get baked as often as I can. <laughs> not, not totally though. Like, yeah, most of the time, but. Then again, it's all a matter of interpretation. I think the weed might slow me down so I can read a little bit more clearly or laugh a little louder, but it doesn't impair my behavior and my activities like the government claims it does. Let's see, Grim, I got Grim to comment on that. He says, the shit hit the fan and you are covered in that shit well see uh that's what i think too and i express it by complaining about the water the food and the electricity but yeah we're we're damn we're covered in it uh what are we gonna do what are i'm not gonna do anything how's that strike you i'm gonna wake up in the morning or i'm not <laughs> and then all this other stuff. You know, there are things to read and there are ideas to um, have an opinion about and be on a side against it, for it. I love it. I hate it. Some extreme that doesn't really matter what you what you feel or what you think about something. That's just you, me, whatever. It doesn't go anywhere. The world isn't going to change because you want it to. No, 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 no. But what I did find out, my world changed because I t took an action to change it. My changes may not be, <laughs> oh, huh, as uh, out of reach as they seem, you know, because, well, let's take Donna, for example. She's run into a little trouble, and she told a few people, and then boom, now she's got a little help, and she's got somebody down in uh, Florida, in Orlando, to go hang with. 
So there's something to look forward to. But you still have to get through the day that you're in. <laughs> so the stress of, well, it's coming, but it's not here yet, is going to be with Donna till she physically does whatever her plan she's making now is and she carries it out but people have this idea that there's no help out there oh the world is so cruel no no it it helps to hmm, what is the right way to explain this from my perspective uh, hold on i my nose is caving in i got to take five give me a second be right back Thanks for your patience. My, uh, I'm having a little cold here. I think the weather's been changing. You, know, you get stuffed up in the head. And then guess what? I'm doing the radio and my nose decides to be Jewish <laughs> and, and share with everybody. <laughs> and that would make doing this here radio thing just a little bit messy. <laughs> so I... Uh, the dead time. I did that last uh, on the 20% off, having to let the dog in and out with the, hold on, I'll be right back. Oy, life. Don't take life as seriously as you can not take it because I think it's a choice. Yeah, and there's a time to take things seriously, and there's situations, but the then there's the rest of this crap, you know, where all the arguing and the disagreement comes in. Opinion. I think this, and I think that, and uh, blah, blah, blah. And most of the time doesn't really apply to the person you're talking to because they're living their life, and... <laughs> As much as the same as we truly are, on the other side of the coin, we're very opposite. You know, and one size doesn't fit all. One idea doesn't do anything for everybody. Ah, well, of course, I have been a um, profound member of the telling the truth movement. Let's call it that. Not, you know, like uh, Bitcoin Jerry's all about blaming the problems on a group so that people could identify and understand what he's talking about. Me, mm, I'm a little bit more vague than that. I think that believing the bullshit is the first step to absolute destruction, you know? And like I say all the time, if your life sucks, it's because you want it that way. If if you want your life not to suck, sometimes you got to look at what you're doing and change it, which is like what Don is talking about. You know, she's having trouble where she is, so get up and go somewhere else. <laughs> sometimes the place where you are can be a catalyst to bigger problems, depending on, on the population, the law, the genders, the this, the all these things that you balance into it. Maybe you're not supposed to be where you're at. And that's why life makes me uncomfortable somewhere. It's, it's life's way of telling me, hey, it's time to do something different. Not... Um, don't be comfortable anymore. You need to suffer and be punished. Nah, nah, nah. All that punishment shit. That blows up in you in your own face. When you punish somebody else, guess what? <laughs> They're never going to forget it. Uh, I have a little brother I don't get along with because of disagreement. And neither one of us is going to bend. That's what our parents raised and that's what we know so that's what we do <sighs> forgiving is 
definitely not in my nature. You know, that's something I got to look really hard at. And then when I got to forgive you, well, what did I do to make that possible? (laughs) You know, you don't just wake up mad at somebody else for nothing. But on the other hand, there's more ways to deal with a problem than uh, we are taught. We're taught certain specific things depending on our, you know, indoctrination. Fight or flight, um, bow and slobber. There's, you know, the military, the police, the status, the bow and slobber clod, clods, uh, group. I don't know what clods. I thought that was fucked up. So let's call them the bow and slobber group because basically that's what they do. They're so self insufficient and so doubting, you know. They have no will left. So they put all their faith in the state. The state will take everything. The state will punish the bad guy. No, they won't. It's a crock of shit. It's a business. If you haven't figured out laws of business by now, (laughs) you shouldn't be giving out legal advice because you don't know what you're talking about. Admiralty Court is not for amateurs. And I don't think there's a court that the Admiralty hasn't gobbled up. They've got, what, small claims court and all this other shit. But the Bar Association, being what it is, it has just fucked us so badly over such a long period of time. Trusting it to um, perform a task for the side of good against the side of evil is very childish. You know, that's when you need to start growing up and... Look at the results around you and figure out how these results actually happened. And when you get to the part where you see there's more dolts out there encouraging the shit than there are minds out there trying to collect to figure a way to solve it, then you're going to repeat the state. And the state's failed. It's It's a mess. It is the most unsuccessful business venture in the history of life because it's all done with fractional reserve banking practices through central banks owned by a few rich fuckers and the rest of us just yeah i can't stop it it's the way it is and if you dare to ever do anything to get out of that what we have is wannabe shepherds in the flock keeping an eye out for that renegade sheep that doesn't want to abide by the rules and be a good little slave and do things by the book Oh, Christ I guess that's really how we ended up here because they lied to all of us I'm Not the only one that feels lied to. I might be one of the few, like Grimm and Moose and Mary and Vincent and Salvador and Rob Works that have, you know, actually taken a little old time to put yourself out there and take the risk of sounding like a complete dolt and telling people how you see things and why you might see them that way. And you never know who might hear you and think, hey, I don't like the way you said it, but you might be on to something there. Because uh, we're we're taught to enjoy and, and embrace our prison. And if you don't, I have to. If I don't, I'm not going to be married. So I've, I've got a marriage in the balance of my thing, not... Uh, not a state, not not a way of life. No, 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 no. This, this is way, way different. And maybe it doesn't it translate because it's such a unique experience to have that it's very difficult to talk to other people and explain what it is. It's just, uh, 
Some things feel good in life. There you go. Let's break it down to simple. When something feels good and you do it, there's that mental reward or something that your brain accepts it and goes, hey, ding, 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 ding. You're doing it right. And then when something that you're doing doesn't feel good, you get that other ding, 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 ding. Hey, stupid. This this isn't good for you. You need to get out of this. <laughs> uh, but, well, those are some life-changing things to mentally decide <laughs> your, your life can end any freaking time the people just drop healthy people sick people da, 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 da. accidents planes blow up shit happens so you know when i wake up in the morning i'm just as surprised as anybody else that's Hannah saying good uh, good night to Grim <laughs> already. I guess she's trying to tell me get off the fucking radio already. You did a dork table. Be happy with what you did. Hmm. I'd like to say thanks to Grimner for all the help over the time. I did a show alone today. I got it on the radio today. The only boo boo I made was I had my volume up a tad too loud, but. Eh, that it could have been a lot worse. Uh, I've been struggling the last few months to uh, deal with the software and the hardware and the, all the internet crap that they do to us behind our backs, you know, and we don't know. And then the next thing you know, you need a new microphone because the settings will be reset every time unless you use this particular kind of microphone. And I think the USB plug microphone I'm using is the core of my problem with uh, being successful doing the radio solo. Because uh, I'm fi finally going to replace it but i think i'm gonna go online and do it and it might take me a week or so i don't know depends on shipping from whatever i order and i might have this microphone stuff solved now and if i don't it will be solved soon so thanks a lot appreciate it slamo you write very interesting thinking ideas and wow what a we're we're not all good and we're not all bad either. I just think trying to be in the center, you know, balance yourself a little bit. Not you, me. You know, balance myself and try not to fall over too often and bump into shit. <laughs> Maybe life will be okay. So, one more time, that was the Dark Table podcast on the 4th of May 2019 and coming up on the lineup we've got tomorrow we've got Grimner comes on in the morning with the blues plays the blues into through and up to Hal Anthony well we we play trivia up until Han <laughs> and my dog's getting me here oh sorry Hal Anthony, <laughs> Sir Hannah Stopper. Oh, good Lord. My dog's attacking me. Okay, okay. Back to reality here. Hal Anthony comes on from behind the woodshed on 3 o'clock on Sundays on the west coast of the U.S. Hannah's in heat, so she's acting really strange right now. It's making me giggle. Sorry, guys. Monday night, 7 o'clock on the uh, East Coast, we got Grim Leftovers, where he does the links and the interesting stories he didn't get time to do on the Freaker's Ball. <laughs> Tuesday night, I'll be on with Vinny doing In a Perfect World, 1 o'clock on Tuesdays on the East Coast. And then Wednesday and Friday, Mary's got... Uh, the Rocket Chair Podcast, 7 o'clock on the East Coast. And then Thursday, I do my On Purpose solo show, 20% off, where <laughs> I tend to get philosophical and think about stuff. <laughs> anyway, 
thanks a lot everybody <laughs> if uh if you see Vinny, tell him thanks a lot for helping me on the dork table today over and